weekend. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, and warm welcome to today's uh, webinar organized by Asian Association of Transfusion Medicine India chapter. May I now request the chairperson of Atom India, Dr. Gajendra Gupta, sir, to deliver the welcome address and to give an overview of today's program. Over to you, sir. I hope, am I, am I audible? Yes, sir. Probably there is some lag. Ah, there is some lag. I think that's what is the problem. Okay. Am I audible now, Dr. Sadhana? Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. So, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a very innovative uh, webinar which uh, the new team of Atom uh, envisaged. And uh, I should actually congratulate the team and the members of Atom that we are coming up with lots of academic program and uh, very innovative programs uh, in coming year. So first we all are attending this. This is, will be a good learning that how do I do it? And I believe this will be a hands-on learning on few things which we all want to do and are stuck at places. And I, I'll, I'll definitely look forward to other selections of topic and the speakers around it because, and you also can suggest something to Dr. Shami if we want to have this webinar and learn from a person doing the work that how do I do it? So, uh, and one important thing, which uh, I think we had finalized to uh, one and a half months back was Transfusion Medicine Hackathon. This is also a new initiative by the new team where a non-scientific and a scientific people came up with their project, they presented the project. And out of those projects, some projects were selected which were funded and taken forward. I think this is something going to give a new initiative because this, this was something to do with social fabric of Transfusion Medicine where we all are involved that how to get the donor and how to retain the donors. Lot of CMEs and um, things and uh, conferences uh, will be coming up next year and this year also where Dr. Shami is regularly putting our posts. And this time actually we celebrated World Donor Day in a very different way where all Atom member countries actually chosen choose a slot. And it was a live show of 23 countries. Now, actually, I'll introduce the moderator so that we can start. I'll not take much of the time. Dr. Sadna Mangwana, I think she is so highly experienced in transfusion medicine with more than 35 years. She hardly needs any introduction. But then also, for as a formality, I'll introduce her. She's a senior consultant and head transfusion medicine at Sri Balaji uh, Action Medical Institute, New Delhi. She has been the treasurer of Atom for quite long, but she is also chairing few of the working committees as well as uh, few of the co-chairing few of the working committees of Atom where all academics are taking place. She has been member of executive committee national hemovigilance program, as well as I've seen her in many meetings in uh, writing of DCGS manuals and many things. She has been recipient of AABB 2022 president uh, award this time and congratulations Dr. Sadna for it. And she has been received many national awards. She has even uh, written a chapter in a book where citations for patient blood management was there. And she has been reviewer for many international journals. And of course she is an assessor of NABH and an advisor to us for our proficiency testing program. Uh, now Dr. Sadna, I'll invite you to take the chair and proceed with the session. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gajin. Thank you so much. And uh, without taking much of the time, uh, we would start with today's webinar and today's topic, as Dr. Gajendra said, very relevant uh, to everyone who's uh, oriented or keen for the academics 
more so definitely for the uh, PGs and but for all researchers and the academicians that how do I do uh, advanced literature search. So for this, uh, Dr. B. Abhishek will be delivering the talk. Uh, he's a additional professor, Department of Transfusion Medicine at Zipmer Pondicherry. He's been recipient of Harold Gunson Fellowship ISBT 2021. He is recipient of ISCM Young Scientist Award for the year 2019 and HD Shori Award, ISBTI 2022 and many more. His areas of interest is clinical hemotherapy, apharesis, medical education. And he is president of Transfusion Medicine Academic Society. Over to you, Dr. B. Abhishek. Welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for that uh, wonderful uh, introduction. I uh, hope I am audible. Yeah, so I'll just share my screen. Yeah, is my screen visible? Is my screen visible? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So thanking ATM for this wonderful opportunity and uh, Dr. Shami who actually came up with this concept. Um, so how do I do a advanced literature search? Okay, so first I will tell a few things about how everybody does it. And uh, finally, maybe I will tell how I do it uh, for obvious reasons. So why do we do a literature search in the first place? So uh, why do we do? So as Madam already said that uh, uh, if you want to come up with an answer for a query that we have, so usually, Generally, what we do is we type in Google as to what is the treatment and all that. So now the problem with Google is that when you type, say you want to know what are the indications for irradiation or some patient specifically, you want to know whether washing is indicated in that patient, you will just type it. Now the problem with typing in Google is you will get so many uh, finds or the uh, websites. Now you don't know which one to trust because the, the first ones are not necessarily the ones which are popular or something. Nowadays, most of the time, the first one is an Amazon site. So, so when we want to find a particular answer for a question of scientific uh, background, and also for PGs, especially as Madam said, if you want to do a literature search for your thesis, or to writing up an article. So how do you go about it? So, so that is why we do a literature search and it has to be scientific in nature. So what are the steps involved in uh, doing a literature search? First is you have to formulate a search question as to what do you want, this, want to search the literature for? So what is your question for which you find, want to find articles or answers through? And then what you want to search, whether you want to search very precisely or sensitively. The difference is, for example, if you want to know whether there is role of music therapy in reducing vasovagal donor reactions in first time donors. So now there are three concepts specific to that. You want to know music therapy, you want to know whether it is effective in first time donors, and in vasovagal reactions only. Okay, so now that is, you specifically make sure that you want a uh, topic or a literature or an article on that. Probably you want a review article or you want a original research, or maybe you are looking for a randomized control trial based on this. So that is where you search precisely. So sensitive searching is you search for vaguely for vasovagal reactions, all the available interventions and things like that. Uh, basically, you explore the term to, uh, so as to include maximum articles and guidelines or uh, literature on that. So that is testing sensitively. I will come back to this. Then once you know, you have to gather the synonyms for your search concepts. That is very important because various things in uh, like transfusion medicine or anything has similar words. For example, vasovagal reactions 
is also called as syncopal attacks or also called as fainting attacks. So you should know on what all, because there could be a very good paper, recent article come on a uh, very good journal, but uh, the title or the word that they have used maybe is post donation fainting. And if you don't search using that term, or you're searching only with vasovagal reactions, probably you may miss that particle. So you should know all the synonyms for your search concept. Then you have to combine your search logically using Boolean operations so as to get what you need. Because as I said, whenever you put some uh, search in your Google or even in PubMed, you get thousand or even sometimes lakhs of options. Now it's humanly impossible to go through all of them. And as I said, unless you filter it out properly, the ones, the results that are shown on the first is not obviously the one which is most helpful to you. So you have to combine your search terms in a logical way so as to get it in a very concise way. Then also there are various dot databases. So you should also, uh, depending on which database you are looking at, is it a Google Scholar, is it a PubMed or a Sinhal or Embase, whatever you are. So you have to prepare or just tweak a bit of these specific headings or uh, the queries that you want to search for these concepts based on the database that you are going to use. Then after that, obviously you have to use the appropriate database for that. Then use a structured, methodologically rigorous approach to conduct your search. I will tell you how to structure it and uh, use it. And also not always whether your database or single database will give you all the possible uh, solutions. So you'll have to search your, uh, supplement your search with uh, pearl growing, hand searching as well as gray literature. I will come back and tell what are these terms. And finally, once you have got the results out of the search, you have to make sure you manage those results. So that is the skeleton of what I'm going to talk for today. That is the steps involved in uh, literature search. So when we say literature search, as I showed, it's not just a one-way traffic or it's not a one-way algorithm. It's basically a research cycle, literature search cycle. So why I say this is, for example, when you, okay, when you prepare a topic and especially for PGs, from the time you actually do a literature search to write a protocol and from the time till the time you actually write it up as a thesis and submit, there is almost two to two and a half years, years gap. So now it's possible that the literature search you made two years back new literature would have come, okay? And uh, you may miss on a lot of important papers or recent papers if you don't undergo this. So, so when you prepare a research plan and search for the result, you have to continuously revive and re refine those searches and also evaluate them and uh, record them. So the search goes on and on till you finally end up doing the uh, ultimate uh, submission. So then where are the things or where do you search for this uh, literature? There are bibliographic databases. That means to say, these are the databases which are usually uh, made up of the citations from peer reviewed articles and journals. Then you have uh, peer reviewed literature that is from uh, the literature from the articles. The difference between bibliographic databases is these databases contain all the available literature and many times it could be possible that some of them are not actually peer reviewed. And the last one is what is known as the gray literature. Gray literature is something which is actually not even published. So where do you get this gray literature? Issue could be from something like a newspaper, printouts, handouts, or uh, some abstract present in conferences as a part of presentation video records, and so on. So these are the three main uh, things where you usually do a literature search. One is the bibliographic databases like PubMed, Embassy, and all this, peer-reviewed literature, and a gray literature search. 
So what are the databases that are available then? So the most uh, commonly used for medical is uh, Medline or the PubMed. Okay. And uh, most of my talk today will also be uh, based on that. The reason is one is, of course, it is free. Whereas the other ones are uh, usually charged and many don't have access unless it's uh, you have uh, some kind of institutional access or so. And the other thing is, it is so robust that if you are uh, thorough or you know how to search in PubMed, uh, most of the other things are just a subtle variation. It's like driving. If you know uh, to drive on a basic model with uh, gears, uh, all the automated versions and all is going to be very easy. So then you have Embes, what is known as the Exerta Medica database, basically a European database. And you have Cochrane reviews. So these Cochrane reviews actually consists of database comprised of formal extensive systematic reviews that often contain meta-analysis. So if you want to search for meta-analysis, Cochrane reviews is the one to go. It includes topics on medication, surgery, technology, education. And most of these articles are also indexed in PubMed. And there is also Cochrane Central that is basically for Central Registry of Control Trials. The trials which are ongoing, you can find there to have an idea of which are the ongoing trials. You can also get some uh, PICO formats used and all. So it basically focuses on randomized or controlled research articles. Then there are some database for the first one which I showed was the database for the peer reviewed uh, research. And there are some gray literature databases, which is called as the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, AHRQ. So they basically develop evidence reports and uh, health, te health technology assessments on topics relevant to healthcare organization and delivery issues. And uh, what is included in them, they basically focus on synthesizing the evidence and facilitating the translation of evidence-based research. Then there is also something called INATA, that is International Network of Agencies for Health Technology Assessment. So basically the various uh, WHO um, guidelines or uh, reports that you see, those kind of reports are hosted in these databases. So they contain information on HTS from various countries around the world. Their research includes systematic reviews, ongoing and completed trials, the questionnaires used in those trials, and also the economic, economic evaluations for the various uh, technologies. So the, once you have got into the database or decided which database you are going to use, the next is to you, uh, gather the synonyms. I already said why you should gather the synonyms. I gave an example. Say, for example, you are looking for an article on vasovagal reaction. There could be articles which has been titled or come in the name of fainting or just as donor reactions. So if you don't include those terms in your uh, uh, search, you may miss uh, good articles and relevant articles. So you have to first gather these synonyms. So how do you do that? So for example, terms that have the same meaning. For example, anemia in, you want to search on say anemia in blood donors. But uh, it could be possible that somebody has published a paper titled as low HB among uh, donors. In the same way, high BP can also be uh, published as say hypertension in donors or something like that. So you have to gather as many synonyms as possible for the search that you're going to do. And also the terms that have different spellings or acronyms, for example, leuco or uh, leuco reduction or leukocyte could be spelled as L-E-U-C-O or L-E-U-K-O. So you should know anemia can be spelled as A-N-E or A-N-E-A-E. -E. So you should know all the terms or any acronyms used, for example, AIDS. HIV is also many a times used synonymously with AIDS. So if you are looking for particularly with words AIDS and somebody has mentioned it as acquired immunodeficiency or something like that. So you should usually know all the spellings or acronyms generally used for QMS, quality management systems and things like that. 
then complex concepts described inconsistently for example post donation counseling more or less many a times can be synonymously used for donor notification okay so you should know uh, and be aware of all these concepts and also umbrella terms and specific names used for example tti ttis can be used synonymously or very variedly and uh, you should know that whenever you say searching for an article particularly on hcv or say syphilis or malaria transmitted you should also make sure that you search many of the articles would have addressed this issue by a name on ttis so you should know the umbrella terms and specific names for that so how do you do that you can ask your peers and friends as to what all the things are used or uh, otherwise and also discipline based jargon and sort i said ind ind for a surgeon may be mean incision and drainage whereas the pharmacologist or researcher it may mean institution uh, investigational new drug so words like look back which are very specific for our specialty we should be aware of it as to what they mean in other uh, specialties and all that okay and one of the robust ways to do it especially is subject headings or especially in pubmed it is called as the mesh terms or the medical subject headings i will come to your details so where do you get these synonyms in the first place one is of course wikipedia you go to wikipedia and type your word say transfusion reaction or leukoreduction or an irradiation it will come up with various results as to what other synonyms uh, they are uh, particularly are associated with this word words so that is one way of doing mining the other one is mesh the other one is uh look for used for terms in controlled vocabulary databases there are a lot of vocabulary databases uh like uh, thesaurus or uh, eponyms and all that so go for used for terms you can directly google it and then you can search for terms that are used for the uh, term or the concept that you are using so then um i will tell you when i open the mesh uh, the, sorry the pubmed uh, website because i will have to close down my slides to do that and then then also what to do when you have for example uh, say words like this whenever uh, the title or the article may be in the name of transfused transfusion or transfuse and you don't want to miss the articles which are uh, named in any of these so what you do is especially in pubmed there is something called as truncating the terms that is after four letters you can use a star and this star will make sure that it searches all the concepts or the words beyond this uh, letters so all your words like transfuse transfusion transfused everything after transfuse will be picked up by the uh, pubmed so that is one way of doing it truncate your terms uh, especially and uh, for example the other one using a wild card for example i said there could be various alterations in the spelling like leuco reduction or leuco reduction so what you do is put a question mark at the word or the letter where you have alterations like i said anemia and things like that uh, mind you the star works only at the end of the let uh, word whereas this wild card that is question mark can be used within the word then there is something called as you limit options in pubmed to limit citations by age group language publication type date human studies i'll just stop sharing and open my uh pubmed page just to so how we do this you can uh, go to chrome or any web browser type pubmed and uh, this uh opens up 
it's always good practice especially for postgraduate students or uh, especially when you're doing a literature search and which will be a continuous process it's always better to log in using uh, you create a login id and a login for the searches the advantage is all your search history is recorded so it's very easy to retrieve for example you search something today and you want to go back to that step if you are logged in it's very easy to go back so once you are logged in your uh, login id is displayed here that means you are so from here onwards whatever work you do will actually be uh, saved and you can easily whenever you log in back you can retrieve it so for example you want to see say uh, transfusion reactions so this is called a wild search or a quick start so uh, you just Abhishek, type uh, yes ma'am uh, dr abhishek sorry to interrupt uh, your uh, screen for pubmed search is not being uh, shared okay whatever you want to show it uh, now ma'am yeah yes okay Thank sorry you. for that so this is the first page actually uh you type pubmed and enter in and only thing is the one where my email id is being shown you you usually have a login uh, uh interface so you click that and login so that all your searches will be stored and you can whenever you log in back you can continue from there okay so and uh, so for example so now how to search this is called a quick search you just type in the word transfusion reactions or hemolytic transfusion reaction and give a search you get lot of articles like this now the problem is there are 25183 articles so now uh say uh, always use now how do it's impossible for anybody to go through those many articles so there are a lot of options that you can do one is display options you go to the display option here there is something called as best match okay so you can change into other things for example you don't want to uh, go into articles which are very old so you want to look it in a way uh, from the newest to the oldest so go for most recent so now what it did it will give you the most recent articles okay so then you can also go by publication date if you know you are particularly searching for one particular article and you know when it was published you can put that date and it will show you or you are searching for a particular author or a journal you can all do that okay and uh, the other thing is per page how many uh, so here it is 10 searches per page you can alter that up to 50 or even 200 so based on your uh, um uh, whatever is convenient you can do that then uh, format in which format do you want the studies to be shown for example here this is called the summary format you have an article title uh, you have the authors journal uh, and also the doa and just a summary you can also make it as abstract so that the articles come like this with an abstract uh, visible okay so there are some various so this one uh, for example or you want to just search with pubmed ids you can do that so that is display options the next is for example you know that there are so many 25000 article you want to see okay i want to see only ones which have the full text or not abstract because many articles uh does not have a full text here and uh, it could also be in different languages which may not be available so you can tick these are called as filters use them so once you put full text your search from 25000 gain to 17000 and uh, now that you know many may be uh, not accessible freely so you want to see only free text full text so check that so you will see you got 4900 searches so now you can variously uh 
change them you want to see papers that were published only in the last 10 years you can go do that 10 years 5 years 1 year so also you can customize it and you want to see for past 3 years you can do that then what type of articles are you looking at for example you want to go into some guidelines bch guidelines or say guidelines for washing red cells or guidelines for irradiation you can kick the guidelines and uh, or you say you are looking only for randomized trials on some particular topic you kick them or uh, you are looking only for review articles especially when you are uh, students and reading for some uh, seminars or something and you are looking for good review articles you can click that and it will reduce your searches to see like this 522 searches and there are also additional filters lot of them you can uh, do by language you want to read only articles in english you can do that or you can search by journals i want to search only by uh, uh, the articles or journals from india or something like that you can do all those things so that is how and also this is very important uh, especially if you are logged in this filters usually stays so you should make sure that next time when you log in and doing a different kind of literature search please clear all so that means you clear all the filters that's very important and many times you may miss very important articles if you forget to do that so that is about using the pubmed filters to refine your search and then there is you can click the articles and uh, save them so that it all goes it saves in your uh, your dashboard here or you can also email them or you want to email to a friend or a guide you tick all the articles that are relevant and you want him to have a look at it you email them or send to them uh, all the search will go and so that you can do in real time and uh, people who are you uh, new to pubmed and uh, want to learn more beautiful user guides are available both in uh, literature as well as some useful videos you can go there click them all your faqs and lot of queries that you have will be answered in one or the other way if you don't find them you can still write them to their uh, uh, help uh, contact team they will definitely help you so uh, that is why i just love pubmed uh, so and uh, there is uh, improvisation every day lot of research goes on uh, to enhance the experience for the people who use it so that is about uh, using the filters in pubmed the other thing i wanted to tell especially here was uh the mesh term for example as i said um so how do you know for example uh, for example uh, hemolytic transfusion reaction or say trally or transfusion reaction how do i know that uh, i have included all the possible options so what i do here is there is something called as this is your uh, usually the first login page when you click into pubmed so there is about pubmed faqs and all that then uh, there is also advanced search we'll go into later then so you can either search by journals for example some of them when you want to publish an article you want to know which are the articles actually pubmed indexed or not so you go to journals and it will show the whole list of articles that are pubmed and you can search them you want to search one particular uh journal whether it is pubmed indexed or not say asian journal of transfusion medicine you want to see whether it is pubmed indexed or not so you click that and search it will tell you that yes this is a pubmed index and things like that so if you have any doubt on any of the journal article you want to submit an article and you want to find out whether it is pubmed index you can do that and then coming to mesh database when you click on this mesh database so that is called as medical subject headings so what i want to stress here is for example 
uh, you want to look for say transfusion reactions and it is there are a lot of variations for this and you want to make sure all the literature is involved so and you don't know what are the possible uh, mesh terms or medical terms that are used so what you do you type transfusion reactions in this mesh box and click for search now what it does it will tell you that these are all the entry items that are included for example see this is called a mesh tree that means to say if you type transfusion reaction in your pubmed search you can be sure that anything below that that is for example here tally so you can be sure that all tally related articles also will be included in this that is the meaning so for example if you search hematological diseases that means to say all the transfusion reactions and anything below that will be included in the search that is how uh, mesh works so for example so if you say transfusion reaction okay so you can for example you want to look for one for example you want to do only classification of transfusion reaction so you can click on that okay or you want to just know pathophysiology of one particular transfusion reaction or something or all so you can click on that you want to just know about the parasites do transfusion so you click on that multiple things or complication of transfusion reaction and give a search to pubmed and uh, so what it means is once you give transfusion reaction you can be sure that all these terms will be included in the search that is how uh, fantastic the pubmed mesh terms are so it's saying here that transfusion reaction or reactions or anything else will be under this umbrella will be included in your search so there is something called as a search builder so for example you want to uh, say search for vasovagal reactions and you also don't want to miss syncope and fainting so what you do is you type this so vasovagal reactions is not included as a mesh term so that means to say so if you search with there is uh, you can't use it as a mesh word so it uh, the, the every day they keep on adding mesh terms based on popularity and whether uh, most of other criteria it just says that vasovagal reaction is not a mesh term so now what you have to do is you have to include it pubmed search builder you can use um vasovagal reactions so you have to search builder so it also said transfusion reaction but you don't want transfusion reaction as a part of so that you can delete that then you go and add fainty so add that to search sorry spelling mistake so it will include fainting and syncope and things like that uh so how to use this and or or not in a pubmed so this is called as boolean operations you should know uh, this uh, this comes very handy as i said for example you want to as i i will use the first example that i used you want to see vasovagal reactions in blood donors because vasovagal reactions can happen in any other patients also lot of uh, patients can have vasovagal reactions and you are interested in only vasovagal reactions in uh, so you go back from the this one so 
vaso vagal reactions if you just search you will get 779 but uh, all of them for example if you see here uh, evaluation of vasovagal reactions in outpatient procedures interventional manage all these are, are not related to you you want to just look into uh, vasovagal reaction in blood donors so what you do is vasovagal reactions these boolean operation that is and or not these are the th uh, three boolean or they are should always be in capital so type that vasovagal reactions and blood donors now it will filter out all the others and just give you a search see it reduced your search to 174 which are all relevant and if you see there you get vasovagal reactions in donors only and then like that you can keep on adding for example you want to see in only first time donors it again reduced it to 68 okay so that is how you use and boolean operator the other boolean operator that you uh, can use is known as or so when do you use or for example you said vasovagal reactions you you just 7 7 17 but it could be possible that somebody has uh, published it in the name of fainting so you add or see it increased to so now next what you do is you can also combine them with multiple boolean for example vasovagal reactions or fainting only in blood donors okay so you put it in the uh, brackets so that all this or will be searched see that so it reduced to 293 results okay so that is how you use or you can also use or syncope okay so your results increase from another five results got added so that is how your boolean operations or or and works then there is a third one which i said not so for example when do you use not for example transfusion reactions you want to see all the transfusion reactions but you are not interested in allergic reactions because your intention is something else so you can write so for example if you say transfusion reactions you got 29000 result but many of them may not be related or uh, in what you are searching so what you do you put not or you are not interested in hemolytic you want to know all other transfusion reaction other than hemolytic so put not hemolytic reactions so it will reduce all the ones which has exclusively hemolytic reactions and gives you a search so that is how you search for example respiratory distress not tally so you can do that respiratory distress not tally so it will give you searches other than the transfusion reactions that are other than tally so that is how you use your uh, boolean operations i'll stop here and go back to the slide sharing with the
sorry for that uh, okay uh, hope my slides are visible no dr abhishek not yet you are, oh. those screen is visible it's a epson is uh, something okay one minute one minute though it is huh? highlighted now? there yeah now yeah yes it can okay the pearl so, growing thing yes ma'am uh, yes it is visible go ahead okay so this is how uh, i was talking about uh, using pubmed to limit your citation by age group for example you want to look uh, in only uh, donors between the age group of 18 to 23 so you can do that the language publication type and all that so next is what is known as pearl growing uh, i mentioned this is very popular what we do so how we do is it includes uh, this is how pearl grows right from a single article you try to uh, expand your search so what you do is for example you are doing a thesis on say look back so you catch hold of one primary article and uh, either use the references given in that article and go back to each one of them to see what they are and what is it that is called as back referencing or uh, backward citation that is you click on the article go to the bibliographic data and you chase each article mentioned in the citation so that is called as backward citation chasing the second one by uh, the way of doing it is that is little difficult that is called as forward reference taking that is to see what other articles have cited them so obviously they would be also related to this article in some way or the other so that is called as forward citation ch uh, ch chasing so how to do that one is whenever you search in your pubmed or google there will be a column as to what are the citations this particular article has so you can use that click on that and it will show a list of all the articles that have cited this particular article that is one way of doing it and also i forgot to mention in pubmed whenever you put some article it will also show you similar articles on the right side of your column so you can click them and see them and there is something called a citation chaser so you type this citation chaser in your uh, google and enter this uh, and uh, you put the article that you want to see what all articles have cited them and this citation site chaser will give you a list of all the citations that are uh, associated with that articles so that is what is known as the pearl growing or the citation chasing now how to construct your search so for example why do it in the first place why should we have a search strategy so for example i will give you whenever you search for some articles say imagine the articles that you are looking for as i showed in vasovagal reactions are in green okay but if your strategy is not clear enough or if you are too specific you may pick up most of the articles but there could be some relevant articles for example i shown in the green here these are all the articles which are actually relevant to you but your search filtration was so precise that it only picked this okay so this is known as doing a precise search but what is sensitive search this is sensitive search what you see in the pink that means it includes all the articles relevant to you but the only problem is there are a lot of other irrelevant results also available so this is how you go from i already showed you how to make and search sensitive or precise okay to make it precise you add your boolean operations or add your filters and to make sensitive just open them up remove all the specific terms go for or kind of booleans and it will give you all the for example have a look at this you want to see whether hand washing before phlebotomy is going to make a difference to the uh, quality especially with the culture or the bacterial contamination of the blood products 
So for example, you search by using the term hand washing, you will get some searches like this. Now the problem is hand washing may also, people would have published in an other name, say hand sanitation. And now if you have not used that or you are going to mix these articles which are relevant. And also some people would have published with surgical scrubbing like you, especially in Corona times and all, we used to do this. We used to add a, a surgical scrub to our hand and sanitize them. So that is also a kind of sanitization. And if somebody has written or published papers with surgical scrubbing, you may miss them. And uh, see here, you use the word hand washing as a single term. People would have used it as a two different with a space between. So it would be possible that you miss them. So all these things are possible. So that's why your search strategy is the heart of your searching. So how to devise strategies and or build defined questions. So what will it do? It will focus your research so that it is more efficient and effective. Make searching for evidence simpler and easier to find and also combine appropriate terms. It helps you identify relevant results and separate relevant ones, the ones from the irrelevant ones. So for example, how does a non-specific or a not a clear defined question, for example, you want to see whether leukoreduction reduction is helpful in patients, transplant patients. That is what you want to answer. So this is how you do. Does leukoreduction reduction help outcomes in patients undergoing transplants? Now the problem is, Transplants may be organ transplant, kidney, liver, cardiac, but your intention will be mostly to see whether in hematopoietic stem cell hand. So how to make the question more precise, something like this. Does transfusion of leukoreduced blood components in comparison to non-leukorized, like leukoreduced, reduced, reduces hospital stay? So when you say outcomes, what type of outcomes are you seeing? 100 day mortality? or say aluminization or something like this. Is it going to reduce your hospital stay? Where? In post hematopoietic stem cell transplant adult patients, for example, that is another issue. Local reduction, you may get benefit. Uh, it's a different when you compare with uh, children because especially their immunity is not that well developed and all that. So the outcomes may be different and with leukemia, so that is what you are looking at. It's not uh, 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 non-Hodgkin's or something else. So that is how you refine or make it a better question so that you ask on your search. Excuse me, Dr. Vishay, can we yes. wrap up fast so that people can have the question answer session as well? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, most of the things I have covered, I will just brush to them. Yeah. So you can use what is known as PyCOT. You all know what is PICOT, population intervention, comparison and outcome groups. Or if it is a, uh, a qualitative research, we usually use population, patient problem or intervention with evaluation. Then there is something called as concept and synonyms. For example, you want to see effect of playing music in phlebotomy room, or room on vasovagal reaction in male first-time donors. So you fill the, this PICOT as far as what is the so population will be first time male donors, intervention will be playing music, comparison group, there is nothing here. Probably a non-music uh, played group would be a comparison. Outcome would be vasovagal reactions and time period effect. So what is, how does concept mapping work? For example, I would look, like to explore the factors affecting compliance with regular maintenance transfusion program for my patients with thalassemia. Why do so many patients drop out or refuse to be treated? This is what you want to do. So you put the concept like this, for example, transfusion maintenance program, or people would have also made it as regular transfusion. In thalassemic patient, compliance would also be mentioned as dropouts or treatment. So you add or for that, it could be a questionnaire based or it could be a focus group discussion that is actually looked into this. So this is how you prepare them and you add that search. So refining your search, replace general search terms with more specific terms, 
add terms or combine search terms with connector words as I already showed and or and things like that. So something like this. Okay, vasovagal reaction and water and blood donor. So filters I have already shown you on PubMed. Even Google search has similar filters. Uh, when you search Google, just below that there is something called as advanced Google. You click on that and you can alt add the filters as I showed in PubMed also. And then you have made a, valid, a search. How do you know it is validated or good enough? So there are websites called Pub Reminder or Yale Mesh Analyzers when you or Mesh on Demand. Okay, so you can go to these websites and actually validate your search and see whether the search that you have made up is picking up all the requisite or something that you are missing. And then I said, what are the supplemental sources for evidence other than this? Newspaper, conference proceeding, clinical trial records, thesis or dissertations. Contacting authors directly is one way of doing it. Government documents. These are usually not available in PubMed generally. Charity or NGO white papers and other reports. Professional association guidelines, you can go to their website and see. Or corporate reports. And once you have served, as I said, the one way of managing is PubMed itself. You prepare a, you make a, uh, log, use a login ID and make your dashboard will contain all the searches and store. You can also use other things like EndNote, Desktop, Mendeley, Papers, or Zotero. You can all use this for all your search options. Then the question is why document your search in the first place? One is to double check your research. You can show to somebody and find out, especially when you want to do meta analysis and all, it's very important. You can manage changes. For example, you can add on new things to the search. You don't have to do the whole uh, exercise from beginning. You can run your searches to scan for new publications. That's very easy. Use the same Boolean operation that you use, save it. You can use the same one. And if you use it on a later day, it will give all the newly added articles also. And also reporting search is very important in publications like meta-analysis and as well as the scoping reviews. And also to ensure that your search is reproducible and easy to understand. So how do you document your research uh, searching methodology? Very important when you publish. You have to first tell what are the databases search and provide, provide the, the, the provider that you have used, like COVID, ProQuest, or PsycInfo. The date you perform the search is very, very important because at a later stage, the search would change and give you different results. What was the search strategy used, including subject headings and what are the text words that were used? What were the filters or limits that you applied? And what was the search history? You give the search history as a one-liner. And also, what are the number of results that you got? Pre-screening as well as post-screening. What is post-screening? Many a times, duplicates may be there. For example, something which is published as an original article and also as a letter to editor, you can remove all that. And duplicates in various other languages can be removed. And also, you have to report what are the number of duplicates and why they were removed. So to conclude, Literature search is a combination of art and science. Keep practicing, use your intuitions, and also some trial and errors should be used. And one thing I wish to tell is uh, in PubMed, you have something called as full text, and also exclusively how to go for full text articles is, one is you go for what is known as PubMed Central. This PubMed Central hosts only the full text articles and you may get there. The other ways of getting would be to ask. And you, of course, if your uh, library has an uh, access or if you are a member of some uh, scientific academics and uh, societies, you can search through them. And last but not the least, I won't, uh, I don't know whether I should tell. We have to uh, show our gratitude to this woman. Uh, the fantastic women who changed the phase of literature search, uh, Miss Alexander Elbekia, the one who uh, host or started SciHub. Uh, so how uh, we could be, we should, we would, and many researchers would have been so handicapped without her. 
and uh, she generally deserves our praise and thanks to this lady. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abhishek. It was Thank a wonderful you. talk. I must compliment you. I'm sure it was a brilliant talk and helpful to the PGs and all the academicians. Maybe whosoever has published a number of papers, but still the way you have uh, explained uh, practically as well uh, uh, to do the advanced literature search, it was a wonderful thing. Thank you so much. Thank Any you. question from the audience? Uh, they can just come up. Or they can write in the chat box. Dr. Sadhana, Dr. Yes. Makru. Well, only yes, thing I would like to compliment Dr. Abhishek for a wonderful uh, this uh, talk. And I think this should be what actually how our all students in the MDR in the DNB programs, actually once they go, they can search, they can do a lot of publications because the publication and everything, it is an art. And I think this should be very good for them. And uh, I was actually, I'm, I'm out of the country. Well, I can say I was I'm watching this lecture at UK. But Thank uh, you, sir. I can, I can Thank see. You. And, uh, but I was really fascinated. And I think this should be very good lecture for all of our newcomers, those who are writing papers and other things. And I think this is a very excellent talk. I compliment Dr. Abhishek to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your support <laughs> and a boost to all of us. Anyone else, please? If, if something is not clear, though it was very elaborate, very fantastic, a brilliant talk. There's no question, I suppose. Okay. Uh, there's one thing, some, somebody says, it is better to have a sensitive search or precise search for a systematic review. Yeah. Which one is so better? Yeah, so for a systematic review, uh, definitely you should start with a sensitive search because um, it's all, uh, you, when you are uh, doing a systematic review, it's very important that you don't miss any of them. So there could be a very good paper uh, which you have missed just because it's in a different language or it's probably because in a different format or uh, like that. So it's always first use the sensitive search once you have made sure that everything is included, then you can go on excluding the ones that is not relevant to you. So if you see any of the systematic review articles, you see that their first search will yield results in thousands, but actually what they involve in their article is hardly some uh, within hundreds. So definitely you should start with the sensitive search when it is for a uh, systematic review. I don't I like think to... this any more uh, question and before we close i would request everyone all audience to switch on their uh, camera so that we can have one screenshot picture virtual once for the memory of everybody yes sir you were about to say something well i just i'm really happy to see shami also there i could not see gajinder i think he was Gajinder's not available video is off sir well he, I, I Gajendra think you have, uh, very much I, connected. I, I would have loved to see him also because being the chairperson, I would have loved to see him. But yes, I'm really sir. happy to see Shami and you all. And I think this was a fascinating talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Stay Thank on, you. sir, Thank for you. a picture. Okay. I, I'll just connect Dr. Gajendra for uh, asking him to switch on his camera. <laughs> Every day is a learning day. Not available. Dr. Shami, uh, uh, Dr. Gajendra is requested to go ahead with like that only. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you to Have all you of you. Have you taken Shami? 
you are mute dr shami yes ma'am thank you yeah. dr abhishek there is one request from uh, one participant uh, is it possible to share the presentation yeah definitely i can share presentation but what i can tell you is the presentation does not have much which will help i would suggest you go to the pubmed tutorials fantastically explained review uh, the videos are there and the text is there most of your questions will be addressed i don't mind sharing my ppt definitely you, you can make it a pdf not in yeah, the ppt definitely. format you can just go ahead with the yeah. uh, but what, what, one, one, one thing one yes, thing sir. i would like to one thing i would like to mention here because i keep on watching this your whatsapp and other thing now what i have seen some of our transfusion specialists like to learn the transfusion through the whatsapp and they are putting can i have an sop can i i don't know they should learn the culture of reading but the, unfortunately they don't they want to read others and then give them a lollipop and i no. think they should be stopped they should not be provided the material and they should go and read the books find out themselves rather than asking somebody to work for them i think it is not ideal i think they remain raw they are not trained at all and so that needs to be stopped so basically everybody wants the ready made material sir they should not be provided and it is bad on the part of the uh, teachers also they should be asked to go and read the books right thank you sir it will be taken care of thank you thank you i thank take you. leave now thank you sir thank thanks you. for joining thank from uk enjoy your trip thank you thank you bye 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 over to you dr shami thank you ma'am uh, at the outset i would like to thank uh, dr gajendra gupta sir for the the chairperson of uh, atom india for all the support and guidance and uh, i'm sure you all agree with me that it was a excellent session and on behalf of uh, atom india i would like to thank dr abhishek and uh, sadhana ma'am for making this session very informative and uh, interactive and heartfelt thanks to all the members of the executive committee the senior transfusion medicine specialist atom family for participating in this event thanks to each and every one for joining us today and uh, hope to see you very soon have a good day thank you it was 35 people attendance <laughs> thank you everyone bye 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 dr abhijit thank you ma'am thank you